Can you hear me? All right, I'm going to turn it off this time. Very good. Um, I'm glad that you all have joined us this morning. I know we do have a lot out traveling and such, but uh, uh, let's remember them in our prayers as always. If they get home safely, that, uh, uh, that the Lord will bring them back to us for sure. Uh, but, you know, today is Memorial Day. Um, it's a day for us to reflect on our, our soldiers and the ones who have died and what they gave up so that we may have the freedoms that we have today. Um, according to the Department of, Vet, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, it said that, I think this was from 2015, that at that time we have 1.46 million Americans serving in our military right now. And according to that same department, over approximately 22 million Americans have served since there has been record keeping of this information. And 1.1 million Americans have died in all U.S. wars, according to Department of Veteran Affairs. And uh, I thought the number would have been a lot more than that, but it doesn't matter. 1.1 million, that is a lot of lives that have, a lot of men and women who put their life on the line for us that we would have the freedoms that we do today. You know, and it's sad that, that many are, are just happy to get the extra day off or, or to have an extra day of nice weather to maybe begin their vacation season or whatever instead of focusing on our heroes. You know, we, we focus on, oh, I get a day off from work. I get a three-day weekend or whatever. Many have forgotten the real reason Memorial Day became a holiday and... There was a time that, this, that it wasn't called Memorial Day, but it was called Decoration Day. And Lisa's family, we all still go to the churches, the, all the little churches over in McQuarrie County, decorate all the, the graves and cemeteries. And uh, her nanny looked forward to that time every year. Every year she would want to go. When are we going to decoration? When's Decoration Day? And, and she would get so excited to go except for the last few years of her life, she just wasn't able to go. But the churches would have a dinner. Um, it was a time to see old friends and family and remember those who had passed on. Now, Memorial Day date back, dates back to 1868, when May 30th was named the day to honor graves of Union soldiers. They were to strow graves with flowers and decorate the graves of, of those who died in the rebellion. But now, Memorial Day is a U.S. federal holiday where the men and women who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces are remembered. We now celebrate the holiday every year on the final Monday of May and originated after the American Civil War to commemorate the Union and Confederate soldiers who died in the Civil War. But now, by the 20th century, Memorial Day has been extended to honor all Americans who have died while in military service. And it typically marks the beginning of vacation season, summer vacation. And it's important that we teach the next generation the importance of Memorial Day and the sacrifices that were made for their freedoms. You know, freedom isn't free. This land that we live in, the freedoms that we have, come with a cost. And that was the lives of those men who went and women who served and gave their all, the ultimate sacrifice, their life. And, and that is why I'm glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad you're here to honor those who have fought for our freedoms. And we've already recognized you that have, have served, and I thank you for your service. Um, I can't communicate in words how thankful I am for you guys who put your life on the line to, for me. You know, and when you did that, you didn't know me. You didn't know me from anybody, but yet you still signed your line, your name on the line, and said, I, I'm willing to sacrifice my life for you. And I thank you for that. Thank you for your service. But, and also, we need to continue to remember Anderson as he, and we need to keep praying for his safety as he serves overseas at this time, uh, and pray for his safety as he travels back, as he comes back home to, because of his pedal. Okay. He's just coming back home. Pray for the travel and safety of all the all the servicemen and women that are coming back. But Memorial Day has shown up because of the sacrifices that so many soldiers have made. 
like I said, we've lost 1.1 million lives and over 3 million wounded throughout history in all the U.S. wars. Most didn't know who they gave their life for, just so that we can have the freedoms that we do today. We must remember those who gave their lives for the freedoms that we have. It's not just the time when we get the extra day off. We get, a, get an extra day on the weekend, a three-day weekend. And we must remember, really think about the lives that we've lost so that we can be here today and celebrate the things that we're allowed to do today where, where they fought for, the freedoms that they fought for. But there is also another Memorial Day, and that's today. Sunday, there's one every week. And if you will, our, our scripture this morning, one of them, i got three different scriptures, but one of them is Romans chapter 5, <coughs> Romans chapter 5, 6 through 11. And I double checked, I didn't, I know that one's right. <laughs> I made a mistake last time, but yeah, that one's right. I think it was Philippians, and I said Ephesians last time, right? Yeah, uh, but yeah. I don't know why I said Ephesians because it's one of my favorite verses I go to. But anyway, Romans chapter 5, starting from verse 6, uh, verse 6 through 11. All right, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom... We have now received the reconciliation. Now, take a moment. Think about the depth of God's sacrifice. You know, when we come around the table and we have communion, that's what we do. We, we think about the sacrifice that God made for us. And have you ever, have you ever thought about what degree you would sacrifice? You know, we tend to think of a sacrifice of, of finances or of time, you know. How much, how much can I give this week? How much time can I serve the church this week? But when you think about it, when, when a person enlists in the military, especially during war times, they fully understand the answer to that question. To what degree would I sacrifice? And that answer is death. I would sacrifice my life for my country. But then look, Look at what Christ did for us. And there's no way, no way at all I can communicate the depth to which Christ went and gave His own life for mankind. You know, and we need to understand that Christ died for a group of people who really didn't deserve it. And it, if you stop and think about it, what did mankind do to deserve a Savior? What did they do to earn the right for Christ to sacrifice His life? And then look at the American soldiers. What have American people really done that all those soldiers had to sacrifice their life for? I look at the world, all the stuff going on today, all the sin in our culture, all the evil that we are told to be tolerant of, and I know we aren't deserving of, of someone laying down their life for us. Especially Christ laying down His life. But then... The more I read Scripture, the more I read the Bible, I, I used to say, well, you know, I'm unworthy. God, you know, I'm, not, I'm just a sinner unworthy of, of your love. But if I wasn't worthy, why did He create me? Why did He create us? So don't think of yourself as not being worthy because we are worthy. The Bible tells us so. But, but Christ died for the sinners. He died for those who were neither righteous nor good. No matter how great the mountain of sins the love of Christ surpasses it. There is no sin or number of sins that the death of Christ cannot cover. Christ, the perfect man, God's own Son, died so we don't have to. He died so that we have that opportunity for eternal life in heaven. 
And there's no greater gift that anyone can give than to sacrifice their own life. Christ did it, and we didn't really deserve it. People around him was living their lives that, that was shameful and sinful, yet he went to the cross. He went to the cross and he died for the exact same people that were yelling, crucify him. He died for the Roman soldiers that nailed him to the cross. He died for you and for me. He died so that we might live. Amen? Look back at verses 9 and 10. It says, Much more then, having been now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Amen? It says that, that, that we're going to be saved from the wrath of God. Now, remember when you were a kid and you got in trouble, you had to endure your parents' wrath, right? I'm going to share a story with you, and please don't hope this against me. Please, I was little. I was young. Didn't know no better. I, well, I can tell you. No, I'm just telling you. Um, my si I have two, I have an older brother and an older sister, and I have a younger sister. And they, my older brother and sister provoked me beyond anything. I'm telling you, uh, it was bad. I had a rough life until I got old enough to fight back. But anyway, my mother had told my sister to go in there and fix me a sandwich that I was needing lunch to go fix me lunch. Well, the sandwich that I always ate for lunch was a mayonnaise on the bologna sandwich. Mayonnaise on the bologna, right? Well, my sister was making the sandwich and she was putting mayonnaise on the bread first. That would cut it. No. I was mad. I said, no, I won't eat it. And she started making fun of me, making fun of me so bad that I started to cry because she would put the mayonnaise on the bologna first. She put it on the bread. And she, as she was making fun of me and walking out the door, well, you know those old pop bottle openers that you had the, the, the glass bottle and you popped it? Well, ours had a little pointy end on the other end that you could open tomato cans with. I throw that at her as she was walking away and it stuck in her back. <laughs> I remember it. She, and it stuck. I was like, oh. And my mom says, you just wait till your father gets home. I had to wait all day for the wrath of my father. And yeah, his wrath hurt pretty bad. I'm telling you. It really did. But none of that compares to the wrath of God. The wrath of God is eternal. You might have to get a whipping or get grounded when you're younger or maybe when you're older you have to go to jail or pay a fine to the government or whatever. But once that whipping is over, that fine is paid, your time is done, that punishment is over. God's wrath is eternal. It lasts forever. But Christ died so that we could escape that wrath. Verse 10 says, while you were still the enemies, when we are not obeying God, we are classified as enemies of God. And that one, that one's a hard, hard one to swallow. You know, our country keeps a record of enemies of our country. And when we are living outside of the will of God, we are enemies of God. And that is a scary place to be. When we set ourselves against God and His purposes, we are enemies of God. Even though many who are not Christian profess to love God, God really knows their heart. He sees their opposition to Him, and, and He knows that they're truly an enemy. But we as Christians have been reconciled through His death, and we shall be saved by His life. We are no longer His enemy, but we are now called His friend. Verse 11 says, And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We have been reconciled with Christ. We are now called His friend. But you know, we, when we come together every Sunday, sometimes it can become like a habit. Or, or we take it for granted, it's because it's where we're supposed to go, it's what we're supposed to do on Sunday. You know, it's, it's 
It's what we do. It's just because we go to church on Sunday. And, and don't raise your hand, but how many of you debated this morning whether you wanted to come to church or not? How many of you have seen the veteran, uh, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in, in Washington, D.C.? I'd love to go see it. I've never seen it. I would love to. Um, have you seen the changing of the guard of the unknown soldier? Have you seen that? That's amazing. I've not seen it. I've seen it on TV, and it's, I just love how the people are so respectful and reverent of, this, of what's going on, what's taking place in, in front of them in, in the place that they're at. They're just so respectful. And, and when we come in here each Sunday morning, we're coming to a memorial too. It's right here in front of me, the bread representing the body of Christ, the body that was beaten, mocked, made fun of, the crown of thorns crammed on his head and nailed to a tree. And the cup representing the blood, his blood that he shed for each and every one of us so that we might live. But it's offered right here every Sunday. We are commanded to do these things in the whole day. The whole day is a time that, that we as children of God remember how we got here. It was through Jesus Christ, it was through his death that we get to be a member of God's family because we're called Christian. We have accepted Jesus Christ into our life and we follow after God's will for our life. It is truly a memorial. Now, if you will turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. This will be the last one you have to turn to. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And as you turn there, I'll talk a little bit about it. it says, um, first, Paul is writing the letter to the Corinthians because he's reminding them, hey, you guys have lost focus. You know, like me, if I'm watching TV or if I'm reading a book or something like that, and Lisa needing to tell me something, she'll say, hey, look at me. Because if I don't look at her, I won't hear half of it. I won't know what she is saying because I'm not focusing on what she's saying. And even sometimes when sitting here at church, something will pop in my head that I have to do, and, and I'll lose focus, and I'll have to remind myself, hey, look at God. Focus on worship. And to be the man that I need to be, the, the, the Christian that I want to be, I need to remember why I am here. And I need to remember who I am, and I am a child of God. And I got to remember that Christ died for me. He died for all of us. But read verse 23, starting with verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and, eat, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now, Jesus didn't die on the cross for himself. He didn't give up his body and his life for himself. He was already in heaven. He didn't need to leave there, but he did. He humbled himself and he stepped into his creation because he loved us. He said, this is my body which I am giving up for you. Then he took the cup and he did the same thing. Do this in remembrance of me. And we do this each week, not as a ritual, but as a memorial, a solemn remembrance for what Christ did for us. Jesus wanted us to make communion so much a part of our worship experience that whenever we do it, we should remember Jesus and what he did. Why? Why should we remember him? Is it possible that we might forget him? I don't think it's that we'll forget him, but maybe it's we forget who he is or, or what he did. And I say that because there are many churches 
Many churches that te teach Jesus as a nice man or a great teacher or a powerful example, but they don't teach the cross. They don't teach about his blood and his sacrifice. It's not appealing and it turns people away. They even took out hymns out of the hymn book that mentioned blood. You know, it's like churches are saying, ooh, don't let the blood stain the carpet. You know, we put millions of dollars in our building. Let's don't let the blood stain our carpet. But you know what? He shed his blood. He died on that cross for you and for me. It's offensive and it should be offensive. And we should be moved when we think about that. Churches have even taken communion out of the main worship and put it in a side room because it's too offensive. Seekers think that we're dwelling too much on their death, on his death, and it's not appealing to them and it might frighten them away. That's a huge mistake. That gives the message that it's less important than other activities in worship when it should be the main focus. The blood of Jesus Christ should be the main focus every time we meet. Seekers and members need to remember what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why, that's why we meet. If that never happened, then what is the point? Why are we here? We must remember the sacrifice. In our culture that we live in today, you all know this, we're, we're fighting against Satan's armies and we can't do it alone. We're fighting against the evil forces of this world. And, and in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 13, you all know this, the full armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in this heavenly places, in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We have to decide if we want God to be a part of our life or not. We have to decide if we're going to stand for Him or stand with Satan. That's it. With Jesus or with Satan, there's no, there's no in between. You can't be on the fence at all. We have to make that decision every day of our life that we wake up if we're going to stand with Christ or if we're going to stand with Satan. That's a decision we have to make every day. But now Memorial Day. Again, I thank those of you with us today that put your life on the line for our freedoms. I thank men like Anderson that he would enlist at a time such as this. I thank him for putting his life on the line. But ultimately, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for putting his life on the line and giving his all. There's a song out there. Um, I'm not a fan of Billy Ray Cyrus, but he has a good song. Some gave all and all gave some. Jesus Christ gave it all. When he died on the cross, he died for everybody, not just a certain few. He died for all of us, and He died for the sins that we have committed, the sins we are in now, and the sins that we will commit in the future. He died for all sins and for all people so that we may have everlasting life in heaven if we choose, if we choose to accept Him in our life. And my question is, will you choose Christ? Will you stand with Christ or will you stand with Satan? And as you ladies come forward to, for, to play the instruments, that is the invitation I give out to you today. Stand with Christ or stand with Satan. It's a decision that you have to make. Now, if you will stand as we sing our hymn of invitation, have thine own way, Lord. If you have a decision to make, make it now. Now is the time. If you feel that you're far away from God, slipping away, now is the time to come back home. Jesus' hands is always outstretched, asking you to come back. So if you have a decision to make, now is the time to make it. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way.
having cookouts, whatever it is, just, just don't forget the reason that we celebrate this day. It's because of the American soldiers that have died so that we have the freedom to do today. Now, some announcements to make. I know um, Debbie will be cooking this Wednesday, but after that, I don't think there's anybody down to cook after that. So, okay, Brenda, you want to cook after that? All right, good. I'll, I'll tell Lisa to put it on the schedule. But um, she'll have a list when she's here to sign up because we're, for the summer months, we usually usually get a fewer fewer numbers because people on vacation, this and that. But um, uh, if we don't, if we can't find anybody to cook, we'll just do pizza or whatever. Right? That's no problem. Um, does anybody else have anything? Next Sunday, um, we had the gentleman come to try out Mr. Names Tim Cantor. Right. So uh, he'll be here and let everyone know. Right. Yeah. Tim oh. Cantor will be here June 5th uh, in the morning. Um, tonight, Jason will be uh, tonight. I, I can't make it back tonight, but Jason will be back tonight to, to teach tonight's class. So uh, if you will, come back for that for sure. I'm sure we have some inspiring words to say. All right, Devin will be here, so no class tonight. Um, Darren, yeah. um, I know Darren and Chad and myself are going to make that trip to Grundy this evening. And we have room for five more. If there's anybody that would like to go and doesn't want to make that drive, you're welcome to ride with us. Anybody wants to go to Grundy to, for a visitation of Paul uh, Ellsley, they have room in their vehicle for more people. Five more people? Um, you can go. I'm sure Todd, will, Todd and the boys and Casey and them, they would really appreciate it. One other thing, Derek, don't forget next week, uh, starting Sunday afternoon, is camp season starts. Uh, senior high week uh, is next week. So keep that in your prayers this week. And and did you all, the ladies, get everything squared away on what we're supposed to take? Cereal. Cereal? Is Cereal. But just definitely keep camping your prayers this summer. Uh, over the next eight weeks, there'll be a lot of campers uh, going through. So keep keep all that in your prayers. Sure. All right. Nothing else. Let's have work from you. We will be dismissed. Father God, uh, thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for what you have done for us through your son Jesus. Father, I thank you now that uh, you allowed us to once again come through these doors to, to worship you, sing songs to you, hear your word. Father, as we go about our day, I pray that we would always keep in mind the sacrifice that you made and also the sacrifice the young men and women have made throughout the years of this great nation that we call America, the United States, Father. Oh, God, it's, uh, I just pray that you would bless our, our events that we have going on, whatever it is, Father God. We just truly thank you for it. Father God, now as we leave here, keep us safe and bring us back at the next point in time. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Stay burp. We need another one of these. We do, we do. Perfectly, on there. Come by, those